Welcome to Drive the DAF. Clear, structured explanation of the daily DAF in 20 minutes. You can even follow in the car. Seches, Sachim, DAF, Yud Gimel has two primary discussions. The first half of the DAF is discussing the Halacha in the three Yemachalikas between Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Huda, and Rabbi Gamliel, which we had seen in our last Mishnah, about what are you allowed to do with Chametz during the fifth hour of the day on Erev and Pesach. The Gemara will bring up Saka of Rav Nachman, the Gemara will challenge it, and then the Gemara will show that Rabbi seems to hold like Rav Nachman as well. The second half of the DAF discusses the simon that was um, established in the Beis Hamikdash as to when you're allowed to eat Chametz and when you have to destroy it, and when you're allowed to keep it but not to destroy it, which we had said there were two loaves of bread that were placed in a visible spot in the Beis Hamikdash. As a simon, the Gemara will analyze why they used loaves of bread, what were the bread from, and how the simon worked, and possibly an alternate to what the simon was exactly. So let's begin the daf. We've seen a machlokas in the Mishnah as to what is the halacha during the fifth hour of the day on Erev Pesach. We know that the sixth hour of the day is definitely usher to eat or own chametz midir abanon. The fourth hour of the day is definitely permitted to do both of those. The question is, what's during the fifth? So there are three opinions. Rabbi Meir says there's no restrictions. You're allowed to eat and own chametz. Rabbi Yehuda says it's forbidden to eat chametz, but you're allowed to own chametz. You don't have to destroy it yet during that time. And Rabbi Gamliel says that the split is not between eating and owning. The split is between chulin and truma. You're allowed to eat and own truma because we don't want to destroy it. We don't want to destroy it because it has kedusha. We don't want to destroy it if we don't have to, so we're, therefore we will eat truma during the fifth hour. However, chulin, which has no kedusha, you can just get rid of it, it's forbidden to eat known during the fifth hour. So, what is the halacha in these uh, in this three-way machlegis? The Gemara says, Rav Nachman, Paskins like Rabbi Huda. So, Gemara says, Rav challenged him, he said, how could you Paskin like Rabbi Huda? We have a Mishnah that doesn't give a name, it's called the Stam Mishnah, and, and the halacha is always like a Stam Mishnah, and it seems to be following the Pesach of Rabbi Meir. What's the Mishnah? Misha says as follows, any time which you're allowed to eat, any time which it is permitted, shemutter, any time in which it is permitted to eat, you're allowed to feed chametz to your animals. So you, you see, there is no time when chametz is forbidden to be eaten, but permitted to be uh, used, permitted to be owned. So that would mean that there is no fifth hour, according to Rabbi Huda, according to Rabbi Huda's approach. Um, this should be uh, contradicted. The fifth hour, you're allowed to own chametz, but you're not allowed to eat chametz. This Mishnah clearly shows not that way. It's obviously going like Rabbi Meir. So how could have an Ahmed Paskin like Rabbi Huda? The Gemara answers, actually, this Mishnah doesn't go like Rabbi Huda or like Rabbi Meir. This Mishnah goes like Rabbi Gamliel. And we've already said that in our analysis of this Mishnah later on in the Masechta. Because the Mishnah doesn't say that any time you are allowed to eat, you are allowed to feed your animal. It says any time it is permitted to eat, it is permitted to feed your animal. It is permitted to eat first as somebody else being able to eat it. So this is really Rabbi Gamliel who says that a Kohen is allowed to eat Truma during a time when a Yisrael is not allowed to eat Chulin. What it's teaching me is during that time when somebody out there is allowed to eat Chametz, meaning during the fifth hour when a Kohen is allowed to eat Truma, then Yisrael is still allowed to feed his Chametz to his animal. However, it does not go like Rabbi Meir, who holds that there is no split. The Gemara then says, okay, but well, hold on a second, but why don't we just say that Rabbi Gamliel is a deciding vote between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Hudu, because Rabbi Gamliel obviously doesn't agree with Rabbi Hudu. He doesn't say that it's forbidden for anybody to eat chametz during the fifth hour. He says, Kohana Merlati Juma. Obviously, he holds that the general halachas that is permitted. The Gemara says, you cannot have a deciding vote that doesn't agree with either of the two votes. Deciding vote has to say exactly like one of the other two opinions. If he has the third opinion of his own, it doesn't count as a deciding vote, and we do not, therefore, establish that the halacha is like him. Okay, now the Gemara um, moves on to bring another b'risa which supports Rav Nachman. Uh, Rav Nachman is quoting Rav. This b'risa is going to also show Rav's halacha, and this is perhaps Rav's source, that there is actually a Mishnah, there's a there's a Tana in this Brisa that does explicitly hold halacha lamaisa like Rabbi Huda, that is forbidden to eat or own chametz during the fifth hour. What's the Brisa? The Brisa is a discussion between the Chachamim and a Tana by the name of Rabbi Elazar ben Yehuda Ishbar Susa, in the name of Rabbi Yeshua. Their discussion was what happens when Erev Pesach is a Shabbos. So you can't have, uh, you, you 
can't burn chametz on a Shabbos. You have to get rid of all your chametz before Shabbos, except for the chametz you can use on Shabbos itself. The problem becomes, what do you do with truma? Truma, you're not supposed to burn or destroy during the time where it is not obligated where you're not obligated to destroy it yet. So how could you destroy it a day early on Friday, which is the 13th of Nisan? You could still eat it to the 14th of Nisan. So, Rabbi Elazar ben Yehuda Ish Barsusa says, destroy it anyway. You destroy everything except for the minimum that you need to eat for two meals on Shabbos, um, because you're not going to be able to destroy it on Shabbos itself, and therefore this is the latest time that you can destroy it. The Chacham said, no, why should you destroy it? Maybe you'll get Kohanim who are visiting you on Shabbos, they'll come visit you, and you'll be able to feed your Chachamets to them. And if it happens that you can't, it doesn't happen. Worst comes to worst, you could always be Mavata the Chachamets, or feed it to your dogs. The Kohanim have a dog, you could feed it to their dogs. Why should you, I, we don't, Lachachila, want to do that with Chuma? But we shouldn't destroy it on Friday. Maybe we'll find a use for it on uh, Shabbos, and even if we don't, we have a backup plan. So Rabbi, Shu- so Rabbi Lazar said to them, what do you mean? How could you suspect that you may get visitors? Kohanim, you, it's Friday. It's right before Shabbos. There's nobody here. You don't have guests coming to you on Shabbos you don't know about. You already know everybody who's in the city. So they answered, well, maybe somebody's just outside the Tchum, and now he's coming into the Tchum, and he's going to be in the Tchum by Shabbos, but he's not going to actually come into the city until Shabbos morning, and then he'll come and visit you, and you will uh, be able to give him truma to eat. So he said, "What if that's your possibility, uh, so then even truma Timea, even truma uh, that's Thailand, that's truma that's Safek Tahar, Safek Tameh, you should be able to save that truma also. Now, the halacha is that truma which becomes tamay has to be burned. Truma which is not tamay for sure, but is possibly tamay. We don't know, so we can't eat it. So usually, we just save it to see if Elio Navi will come and tell us whether or not it's meant to be uh, burned because it's tamay or not. Now, we had seen that the halacha here was that on Erev Pesach, which is Shabbos, you may as well burn that stuff, because you're not going to be able to eat it on Shabbos for sure. Everybody agrees to that. That Suffolk Tame Truma, you're definitely not going to be able to eat. So you bet you should for sure burn on Friday. So, uh, Rabbi Elisa says, according to you, that you're concerned, that you uh, are hopeful that somebody's going to come visit you on Shabbos, and now he's just entering the Tchum, so therefore you don't know about him. So by the same token, it's possible that that Truma that Safek Tame will also become permitted for you to eat. It's far out, but you never know. You're uh, counting on far out things t- to happen. How might that Truma, that Safek Tame, become permitted to eat? Well, maybe Elio and Avi will come, and he'll tell us that it's not Tame. And Mashiach will be here, and it'll be great. And we'll also know we don't have to burn that. So why should we destroy it before Shabbos? Save it on Shabbos. Maybe Elio will come. So on that Chachamim answer, they said, uh, Elio and Avi can't come on Shabbos because it's Erev Pesach, and we know that Elio and Avi doesn't come on Erev Yantif. And he also can't come today anymore in the day today because we know he doesn't come on Erev Shabbos. So it's, he's definitely not coming today or tomorrow, and the day after that is Pesach already. So this is this entire Machlokas. Now the end... The, the final note here is that Rabbi Yeshua, that is Rabbi Elazar ben Yehuda Ishbar Susa, in the name of Rabbi Yeshua, says that on Pesach, that on Erev Pesach itself, which is Shabbos, you have to finish eating it by the fourth hour. During the fifth hour, you can't eat it. And the Psach in this Bryce is that the Lacha is like Rabbi, El- Rabbi Elazar ben Yehuda Ishbar Susa, in the name of Rabbi Yeshua, explicitly. So the Gemara says, the assumption is that when we say that halachas like, and we mean it, all is halachas. First of all, that you're supposed to burn whatever you can on Erev Shabbos, only save the minimum that you need to eat on Shabbos. And on Shabbos, you can't eat it past the fourth hour. So that is that would be a source of halacha. And there's a b'risa here, there's a Mishnah that shows that the halacha is backing up Rabbi Yehuda, that you cannot eat after the fourth hour. You can't even own chametz after the fourth hour. It has to be completely gone. Uh, meaning here, it has to be eaten. Also because it has to be destroyed. You can't destroy it other than eating it because it's Shabbos. So the Gemara says not necessarily. When we say that the halacha is like Rabbi Elazar, we just mean that the halacha is like him as far as you should burn whatever you can besides for two meals worth, you should burn that on Friday. does not mean that the halacha is like him on Shabbos itself, that you have to eat it by the conclusion of the fourth hour. It could be that you could leave it over until the fifth hour, um, and uh, you don't have to eat it by the fourth hour. You could eat it by the end of the fifth hour itself. 
The Gemara now wants to say that Rebbe, Rabbi Huda Nasi, actually also holds like Rabbi Nachman, who is quoting Rav, that the Lacha is like Rabbi Huda, that during the fifth hour, it is forbidden even to own Chametz has to be destroyed already by the end of the fourth hour. How do you see that? From a case that happened. There was a man who left a bag of Chametz in the care of someone by the name of Yochanan Chakuka. This bag of Chametz got a hole in it. Mice chewed through the corner of the sack. It was actually two sacks. And the Chametz was spilling out, so you couldn't just leave it. And it was Erev Pesach, and the time of Isser Chametz was approaching. And once the time of Isser Chametz hits, this bag of Chametz would become Aser Bahana and valueless. So Yechon and Chakuka wanted to know, what should I do with this? I could sell it now. It'll still have value. It's not time of Isser Chametz yet. It's just a very low price. Maybe I should hold on to it because the owner might come back and then he'll get the full value out of it. He'll be able to eat it. Uh, on the other hand, if he doesn't come, then it's going to be completely worthless once the time of Isser Chametz shows up. So what should I do? So he went to ask Rabbi Huda Hanasi, and Rabbi Huda Hanasi, in the first four hours of the day, said, just leave it, he may still come, don't sell it at a low price. In the fifth hour, he said, okay, now you should already sell it. So Gemara says, why did he tell him to sell it? Obviously, he was telling him to sell it to a guy, because a Jew can't uh, eat it anymore at this point. It's usher to be um, eaten, because it's already the fifth hour, but you're still allowed to sell it. So you see... He's clearly holding like Rabbi Yehuda that during the fifth hour it's usher to eat, but it's permitted to sell. So Gemara says, "Who told you that he's telling him to sell it to a guy? Maybe he's telling him to sell it to a Jew. And the reason why he's telling him to do it now is because if you wait any longer, it'll become usher. You won't even be able to sell it to a Jew at all. You won't be able to sell it to anybody. It'll be, it'll be the time of Isra Hana will hit." He's saying sell it to a Jew, which means that it's not usher ba'achil. It's not usher ba'ana at all. It doesn't have to be destroyed yet. You're just telling him to sell it now before it hits the end of the fifth hour, and then it will be us according to everybody. So Gemara says, what do you mean? It's, uh, if he's telling him to sell it to a Jew, why does he have to sell it at all? Let him keep it for himself and exchange it for money, meaning let him sell it to himself. Why does he have to go to the street and find a, a Jew to sell it to? If he's telling him to go out and sell it, obviously he's telling him to go find a guy. Gemara says, no, not necessarily. It could be that he's really uh, is telling him to sell it even to a Jew. However, he cannot sell it to himself because the Allah is that a guardian of something that's being destroyed should not sell it to himself because it looks like impropriety. It looks like he probably sold it to himself at a very low price. And the rule is, as the Pasuk says, a Jew should always be above suspicion, shouldn't do things which can possibly invite accusations, and therefore you shouldn't sell things like this to yourself. Now the Gemara notes, though, that actually that uh, a different report of the incident said that Rebbe explicitly told him to sell to a guy, and therefore he was supporting Rebbe Huda. In the fifth hour, you're allowed to sell to a guy because it's not Asr Bahana, but it is already Asr to eat. It's Asr Ba'achila. Now, the Gemara uh, takes a slight sidestep into this halacha here. We see that Rebbe was saying that if something's being destroyed, you should sell it. If you're guarding something for someone and it's being destroyed, you should sell it. The Gemara says that is actually a machlokas between Rav Shimon Gamliel and the Chachamim. According to Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel, uh, you should sell it because you're saving the man's property from being destroyed. According to the Chachamim, you shouldn't. It's not yours, it's his. And if it's being destroyed, it's not your problem. You're not supposed to sell the thing. The Gemara says not necessarily so. It could be that in this case everybody would agree because over here it's being destroyed completely. That whole machlokas is only if it's being destroyed in the normal amount of depreciation that whatever he's leaving by you has. You, you do not have to interfere to save it from normal standard depreciation or rotting. Here, it's being destroyed a lot faster than normal depreciation. It's becoming completely valueless as about now when Pesach arrives, and therefore everybody would agree. The Gemara now <clears throat> moves on to refer to the last statement in the Mishnah, that we had seen, that in the base of Mignash there were simanim, there were signs created to inform the people that were crowded there to bring their carbon, there were signs to inform them when the time of eating chametz ended and when the time of burning chametz uh, had to be accomplished. And the signs were as follows, there were two loaves of apostle bread that were put on the bench in the seating area. As long as both loaves were there, you were allowed to eat chametz. When one loaf was removed, you had to stop eating chametz. When the second loaf was removed, you had to burn the chametz. So Gemara, first of all, says, where was the place exactly? On the bench. The bench is too low for people to see. What's the point in hiding something you want people to see? Gemara says, it, the bench had a roof over it, and it was placed on the roof of the benches. Gemara now describes the benches a bit. Gemara says, Harabias had a row of 
these seating areas surrounding all around the perimeter inside of Harabayas. It was two rows of the benches, one inside the other, covered by a roof. Rabbi Huda says that this was called an istavanis. Uh, these two rows of the benches, istavanis, is a uh, area in front of stores in which people would hawk their wares and they would sit on the benches and oh, and and uh, call out the things that they have to sell. So this also was set up in the same way. Now the Gemara says you had puzzle loaves of bread there. What is puzzle about these loaves of bread? The Gemara says it was loaves of bread that were connected to a carbon taida. When something happens to someone and he's saved from a troubling situation, under certain circumstances he has to bring a carbon taida, a special carbon to thank Hashem, which is a animal, along with 40 loaves of bread. That's 30 loaves of matzah and 10 loaves of chametz. Now the chametz you cannot eat on Pesach. The Gemara brings a bris that says you can't bring a carbon taida even on Erev Pesach because you cannot minimize the time in which the bread is meant to be eaten. You wouldn't be able to eat it after uh, the sixth hour of the day, and that would minimize the time that the carbon breads could be eaten. Allah says you do not bring a carbon in a time when it won't have its full period of eating, and therefore you can't even bring it on Erev Pesach. Therefore, everybody used to bring. Carbon and the tide does on the 13th of Nisan, the day before of Pesach, was the last day you could bring it for the next nine days, for the next eight days in Eretz Israel, and therefore um, anybody who who knew they were going to need to bring one over the next eight days brought it on Erev and Pesach. Therefore, you had a lot of crowding of chametz bread around there, ten loaves for each carbon. It couldn't all be eaten within the day and the night that it has to be eaten, and therefore when the dawn broke, on the morning of the 14th of Nisan, all these carbonos breads became puzzle, and that's what they used. So Gemara says um, that's one approach to why these breads had a soul. The Gemara has another approach. It's not that they were actually puzzle. They were just not edible. And the reason they weren't edible is because their carbon wasn't slaughtered, meaning somebody set them aside to go with the carbon taida, and the, and the animal wasn't slaughtered. And now you can't slaughter it because the animal got lost. So you can't eat these breads. Nothing you can do with them. And they're chametz, so they're about to get destroyed anyway. So therefore, they use them for the simon. So the Gemara says, well, why don't you just uh, designate another animal to go along with these breads and then shech that? Gemara says you can't do that. You can only add breads to the uh, animal. You can't add animal to the breads. Gemara asks, there's still another solution. You could actually buy the Kedusha off these breads. It means you could exchange their Kedusha onto money and then use that money to buy other things. Then these breads will become a chulin. The Kedusha will go off them. And then you'll be able to um, eat them. What's the problem? Why do we need to throw them out? The Gemara now adjusts this approach slightly. The Gemara says, actually what happened was as follows. The carbon was slaughtered, it was shechted, and therefore the bread gets kedushas haguf. It's not just monetarily holy, it's actually a carbon holy, and you cannot redeem it anymore. There is no redemption. What happened, though, was that the blood of the carbon spilled. And Allah is you can't actually eat the bread or even the carbon itself until you sprinkle the blood on the mezbeach. Here you'll never be able to sprinkle the blood. Therefore, this bread will never be able to be eaten. It can't be redeemed. There's no solution for it. It's going to become puzzle and usser when Pesach arrives. Therefore, we use that. The Gemara says this halacha uh, reflects the opinion of Rebbe in a machlokes about breads of karbonos. What's the machlokes? Well, in the case of breads of a different carbon, breads of a uh, carbon that's brought on shvuas, the shtei alechem. So over there we have a machlokes, when you shech the carbon, does that give kedusha saguf to the breads or not? According to Rebbe, it does give kedusha saguf, and therefore you can't uh, redeem it anymore, and you aren't actually allowed to eat it until the blood is sprinkled. And both of them have to be done properly, have to be done lishma. Both the shechita and the sprinkling of the blood has to be done lishma. Therefore, that the same halacha would apply here. However, according to Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon, it doesn't actually get kedusha until after the sprinkling of the blood. So there, just the fact that you slaughtered it doesn't give it kedusha sakuf, and you would be able to redeem it um, until the blood was sprinkled. So if the blood is sprinkled, you can actually eat it. If the blood is never sprinkled, you can redeem it, and therefore this explanation wouldn't work. Gemara says, not necessarily is that true. Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Shimon says that in that Gemara over there, that's referring to a case where you never even caught the blood in a cup. Catching the blood in a cup, however, could be that Rabbi Lazar, 
Rabbi Shimon would agree that that does give a Kedushas HaGuf just that action, and therefore you can't um, redeem it anymore. Now, the Gemara brings two additional possibilities as to how the Simon and the Beis HaMikdash worked. The Gemara, first of all, quotes a Brisa that says that they used the breads and that they were Kshayrois. They were not Psulas bread. They were kosher bread. They used regular uh Carbon taida bread was nothing wrong with it, and the second brisa says that it wasn't actually bread they used were cows. The cows were plowing on Harazesim, which is just across the valley from the base of and everybody could see it. As long as two cows were plowing, you were allowed to eat chametz. And when only one plow was, when only one cow was plowing, you could only have chametz. You didn't need to destroy it, but you couldn't eat it. And when both cows stopped, then the chametz had to be actually physically destroyed. Drive the Daf is a project of the Grand Woodland School and is presented by Rabbi Yitzchak Landa. Find us on YouTube or subscribe to daily emails by emailing drivethedaf at gmail.com.